Hello and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, well, today's edition where we're going to look at Sudoku. Mark's already looked at the uh, quick cryptic from today's Times crossword and I'm going to complete the series of the grand final puzzles from this year's Times Sudoku Championship. So this is puzzle four uh, and as usual uh, I'm just going to fill in the easy ones and then we'll have a look at the grid and see what we can see. And you can see I'm going along here just filling in. Um, I've, not, I've not done anything clever at all. All I've done is just, you know, scanned one, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, sevens, eights, and nines. And, you know, the thing's sort of filling in fairly, um, fairly nicely at the, at the minute. So I'm not sure I'm seeing anything particularly clever yet. Um, we'll just carry on and see where we get to. Okay, well, that's the first slightly clever thing is with the nines here. So again, we've seen this technique so often in these puzzles. Um, so let's have a look at columns four and columns five. Well, we've isolated nines in this box, in one of these two cells. And we've isolated nines in this box, in one of these two cells. Now, you should be able to see that either this is a nine and this is a nine, or this is a nine and this is a nine sort of an X shape of nines going on and we can be absolutely certain therefore that there cannot be a nine in this cell or this cell. Um, so the nines in the central 3x3 three three box are in column 6 and therefore the can, nine can only go here, it's the only place it can possibly go. Um, as I say we've seen that many times uh, over the last few weeks, um, but there's no reason not to discuss it again here. So now we've locked a three in the central box here. So again, just scanning simple Sudoku logic, we can see that there's a three up here. One of these two cells. This is just pure Tom Snyder logic, which again we've discussed before. Um, now three is forced here and that means that this is a 9, which means that this is a 9, so that's the way the 9s are meant to fall out. Uh, okay. Three's here. Uh, so now we can obviously see this has to be an 8. And the 8 in um, the 8 in column 9 has to be in one of these cells, so it has to be here. And it has to be a 1, this has to be a 5. Quite an odd puzzle so far in the sense that actually almost, um, almost nothing clever has been required yet, which makes me a bit nervous I may have made an error, but we'll carry on just uh, see how far we get. So three, five, six to place here. I can't quite see how that's going to work yet. I suppose we can mark the three just for good order. These two cells obviously are limited to fives and sixes, but um, just for the sake of good order and for the sake, for the sake of keeping the same notation throughout the puzzle, I'm not going to mark that in. I'm just going to try and remember this is five, six, and this is five, six. And the next thing I've spotted that's reasonably obvious is that we can lock the fives here, which forces a one into this cell, uh, which means this is a one here. So, okay, so it's going to be seven, eight, seven, eight. It's 3737, three, seven, but again, I'm not allowed to write that down. So remembering this is 5656. Five, six. Mm, what else can we do here? Ah, okay. So, okay, I can see something we can do. If we look at, um, if we look at the central row here, 
um, well, th this box is very restricted. We've got to place 257 somehow in here. So that's, that's yeah, for these three cells. These are 257 in some combination. And let's just look at the central box here. We've got um, here we've got to place 237 in some combination, but we know the three is locked here, so this is this is two or seven. And we know this is two five seven. So these three cells here form, I don't know what we would call it, a hidden a hidden triple or something like that, uh, in twos, fives and sevens. So this four six, remembering the notation we're using, that, that wasn't originally meant to suggest that this couldn't be a 7, but in fact it cannot be a 7. The 7 in this cell here is locked in one of these two positions for, by the logic we've just discussed, and that means that this is a 7. Let's see if that helps us. It's got to be an 8 now, I think. Yeah, I mean that this looks like it was the, the crucial step, doesn't it? So this is now this is now five, and this is the six that we were looking for before. Um, now we've got six, seven, four in here, four, three, six up here, um, and it really that means this has got to be a two. This has got to be a 2, this has got to be a 2, this has got to be an 8, and you can see now that I think that it's um, it's really starting to, um, to fall. So that was the that was the crucial piece that we um, that we had to identify there was this this funny hidden triple in these three cells. Um, I don't know how easy that is to spot actually. Um, Certainly under time pressure, I think that would be quite difficult to spot. I'm pretty sure the, the, the best way of doing it of this puzzle, again, as we've discussed before, might well be to guess. Um, love to know how somebody like Kota would, would do this puzzle, whether, whether he would need the guess or whether he would just see the solution, uh, you know, as if by magic and, and, um, and get there that way. Um, well, we've got there. We've found a logical route through, which I'm always pleased to do. And I hope this was interesting. It's the last one. Um, and we'll see you again next time for another Sudoku, Killer Sudoku, Times Crossword, who knows? But something interesting about solving puzzles. Thanks for watching.